The first table as you enter the Vietnam Experience Exhibit is dedicated to grenades, pyrotechnics, signal devices, and mines. The wood box, you will find several examples of live smoke grenades using all the different colors used during the Vietnam War. On the center of the table, you will see an M72 anti-tank weapon and an M72A2 anti-tank weapon, commonly referred to as LAWD rockets, lightweight anti-armor weapons. The M72 had this cable running a back the side to arm it. Unfortunately, a lot of soldiers, when firing it, would get cut by that cable across the cheek. So they had to redesign it to the M72A1 and A2s to make it more safe. You'll also find an M18 anti-personnel mine, commonly referred to as the Claymore. But this video is about this small blue can right here. That is a Bouncing Betty anti-personnel mine. It was a copy of the German S mine used during World War II. Basically, you would bury it in the ground and someone would step on these three prongs and when they stepped off, it would discharge a grenade behind them to explode, causing death and casualties amongst the people patrolling in the area. When we were with the wall in Iowa, we had a gentleman come in who was an army veteran in the Vietnam War, and he proudly proclaimed, you have a bouncing Betty. It was like he saw an old girlfriend he hasn't seen in over 20 years. He was actually excited about seeing the mine. And he shared with us the experience that he actually sat on one when he fell in the mud on a patrol in Vietnam. And he could feel the three prongs in his butt cheek. And he knew at that moment his life was short. So basically he carefully got all the gear off of him and he got his feet underneath him. And he thought, if I could just jump and clear to the other side of the, the berm of a rice paddy, I might be able to make it. I'm definitely going to get hurt, but I might be able to make it. So he went for it, and he heard the mine discharged. And after a couple seconds of silence, he opened his eyes, and he found the grenade was laying in front of his face, never detonated, and it was a dud. Over the years, he shared this experience with every member of his family, and then eventually his grandkids and his great-grandkids, but all they could ever see was a photo. During our exhibit, he came back seven times with different groups of his family, different friends, and once again, shared this experience. Unfortunately for him, that this was a little bit different and that this time instead of looking at a picture, it was the first time his family could actually see the bouncing Betty. And when he shared his experience, each one of his family members came and they basically touched the three prongs on the top. And at that moment, I watched every single one of his children, his great-grandchildren, his grandchildren start to cry. It was the moment they realized what he was experiencing. They could feel it for themselves. And that is ultimately why we allow people to touch our exhibits and touch our artifacts, because ultimately that is the best way to learn for children is to feel for themselves history.